Uh, good morning. Uh, in this game of football, when you look at um, about 60, 65 plays that we play, uh, the game is going to be determined based upon about maybe three or four plays. And uh, you always hope that you're on the receiving end of those plays. Unfortunately, this past Sunday, we were not. Um, uh, I thought we did some great things. I thought we played well in spurts. Uh, we stopped the run early, uh, but we gave up big plays, which you cannot do in this league. Uh, Got to do a much better job, number one, of tackling. Just a routine uh, over route that went for 75 yards. That's uh, unacceptable. And with that, I'll take your questions. Now, uh, obviously, with everything that happened with Jermaine, and he's no longer with the team. So uh, as defensive coordinator, how do you adjust to uh, fill in uh, a starter's role? Well, I think we've been down this road before. When you look at, um, you know, Ward and, and, and a Greedy being out, you know, so Jermaine, step, uh, Jermaine is gone. I'm looking forward to the other guys stepping up. You know, Morgan's going to have to uh, play a big role. Um, Randall was back, which is a major plus for us. So uh, it's really the next man up mentality. Is it fair to say that Morgan would probably be the primary guy that you'd turn to? Uh, yes, he would be. You know, uh, again, you're looking at Morgan as well as uh, Randall back there starting for us. And I think Justin Burrs has done a tremendous job when he stepped up and played as well. And, and there's an opportunity for, um, you know, Whitehead to be able to step up and, um, excuse me, um, uh, Redwine to be able to step up and, and play well for us. So I'm excited about the guys that we have back there. And I, I'm not uh, worried at all that they're not going to get the job done. So. What you mean? Is that something you address with the team as like a cautionary tale, or I mean, how do you kind of approach that? You know, Freddie has done a tremendous job in really addressing that with the team. I think um, the organization has handled it well. Um, uh, again, uh, my feelings uh, for Jermaine as a player or a person hasn't changed. I do not condone what he said or did. It's very unacceptable, uh, inexcusable, and it was very sens insensitive. Uh, so. Um, that's the, that's the world and the life that we live, you know. Uh, our, our lives, our job is scrutinized. And you know what? We have to play better. We got to tackle better. You know, we need to put a better product out there for our fans. So uh, I'm looking forward to, you know, getting back on track this week. And our players are as well. It was such an emphasis for you, you know, all training camp and, and all during practice, the tackle is so important to you. Uh, so how do you get to, you know, the eighth game of the season and have a tackling performance like that? Uh, Mary Kay, I really can't tell you and pinpoint the reason why uh, we're at the point of attack. We got to learn how to finish, you know. Uh, it's a point of emphasis each and every week. Uh, that's how we start our practice off on Wednesday uh, with our padded practices. So uh, understanding the situation, uh, again, we missed it out of the post. Uh, Greedy was right there to make the tackle. He's trying to go for the script first, and we can't do that in that situation. So we got to get the guy down on the ground. Was there a particular Devin, Devin Singletary? I said it again. Challenges in their run game, and in particular, Devin Singletary, and what you've seen from him? Uh, I think Singletary, as well as Gore, all those guys do a tremendous job running the football. I think that's what they're going to try to establish the run game. Um, we got to do a great job of standing in our gaps, um, you know, and getting off blocks. I think when you look at their offensive line, uh, to me, that's their strength in the run game. They do a tremendous job coming off the ball, getting to the second level, cutting guys, and uh, getting on the perimeter. So. Uh, the challenge is going to be trying to stop the run game and really try to get, um, you know, Josh Allen in a situation where we got to drop back and pass the football. Steve, do you guys have any padded practices left? Do we have any padded practices left? I, I assume we do. Freddie's in control of that for the number count, but I think we do have some left. So at this point, you use them sparingly? Uh, we use them pretty much every week on every Wednesday uh, that we pad up. But uh, to make it quite clear, uh, we work on tackling each and every day, even when you don't have the pad zone. It's all about the leverage position, understanding where your help's coming from, being in position to finish. Uh, so it's not always about the physical part of it as well. So it's, uh, it's the uh, minute things, the details uh, that we got to make sure that we clean up and execute. I know this week there's a little added emphasis on tackling just because of what happened in Denver. But from a league-wide standpoint, uh, and the, li the limit that the CBA places on how many times you can be in pads in season and, and things like that, missed tackles seem to be like a league-wide thing, not just a, a Browns-specific thing. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious, you know, I know you mentioned you try and do things to work on that without the pads, but just how challenging is that from a coaching perspective to 
work on something that you maybe necessarily can't actually do in practice? Well, I, I think, you know, you have to be able to deal with the parameters that you've been given. You know, it's part of the um, Players Association. So uh, we've been dealing with it for years now. Uh, I still think there's ways around that, as I mentioned, just the, uh, the details. Uh, these guys at this level understand the physicality of the game. So I don't really think it's that. Uh, I think it's more about leverage, angles, positioning yourself to finish. And uh, that's been our point of emphasis, and that's what we re really got to get back to. It's just the base fundamentals. Touchdown. Um, it's easy to say he just went up and made a great play, but as a coach, what do you tell Denzel after that? And what do you hope he does differently next time? Well, I thought Denzel was in great position. I thought he did a tremendous job with in the down at the line of scrimmage. Uh, the one thing that's different at the point of attack right there, he needs to go back and attack the ball as we coach and we talk about all the time. You know, he laid out for it as if the ball was coming over the top and it allowed Sutton to go over the top of him. But uh, the easy thing is to do is to come back and go up for the ball at that particular point in time. He may not catch it himself, but he won't allow Sutton to catch it. And that's the key thing. And the size difference there makes that challenging also. No, I don't think the size difference was a challenge, was a challenge at all. I thought Denzel was in great position. He just didn't execute his technique. So going forward, you don't worry about Denzel and the big No, receivers. Denzel to me has the, the capabilities and the talent to be one of the top corners in this league with his size, however you want to see it. You know, did you see him tackle? I mean, the guy's physical. He comes up, and that's one of the things that you don't see a lot with corners in this league. When you talked about giving up the few big plays that wound up turning the game, and that's happened before. I mean, you know, the Tennessee screen and the Seattle walk the march down and scored at the end. Like, how do you get your guys to play their best when the moments are the biggest? I, I think, again, it's just the consistency in which you play, you know, because uh, I just alluded to as I started out, and I tell the guys this all the time. I can't tell you when those three or four plays are coming, you know. So therefore, we got to play each play as as if this play is going to make the difference in the ball game. And uh, you can't see change of speed out there. You got to see guys going full speed on each and every play. So uh, our guys are upbeat. They're very spirited. Um, you know, this is the second half of the season. We talked about, you know, it's no different than coming out of the locker room at halftime. You know, we got to start fast this third quarter. So uh, that's the mindset that we have, and we're just going to try to take it one game at a time. Vernon been playing the last few games, and if he can't go, how do you compensate for that? I, I thought he played well. He stepped up. He's been making a difference when he's been out there. Um, it's no different uh, with the corners, no different at the safety position. I have total confidence right now in Chad Thomas, Chris Smith, that those guys are going to step in there and get the job done if Vernon can't go, Olivier Vernon can't go. What challenges does Josh Allen present, and what are you seeing on film of him this season? Uh, very big, strong, physical quarterback uh, that can break tackles. I think he does a tremendous job in really scrambling and buying time and uh, getting the ball down the field. Um, very strong arm, you know, can make every throw, um, and uh, he's accurate. So uh, it's going to be a challenge for us. Most importantly, we got to contain this guy. And you see, again, uh, the same situation this past week on third down. We, uh, opportunity to get off the field, we lost contained. Six plays later, balls in the end zone. So when it's the opportunity for us to get off the field, we got to make sure that we do that. So uh, I think he's very talented. I liked him last year coming out of the draft. What about Chad Thomas, I know you mentioned you have confidence in him, but what has he shown you? And he barely played at all last year, and he's played more this season. What has he shown you, and what can he do if he gets that? Well, it starts ball? really in the run game. I think he does a tremendous job playing the six technique, you know, and that's going to be a major emphasis for us this week in this run game, really being physical with the tight ends, trying to penetrate, knock the guy back off the ball. Uh, and I think he's been decent in, in the pass rush uh, and the things he's doing. He's quick off the ball. He has great acceleration. Uh, the thing that we got to do this week, we got to make sure we get to the depth of the QB encounter. Cap play. Um, how do the rules change when you mentioned losing contain on the quarterback boot? Um, that's essentially what happened when Philip Lindsay took the edge there. How do the rules change there, or do you want them to maintain contain regardless of? Regardless of the situation, you got to main contain. On that particular play, we have an automatic check that we go to, and that's what we got to. Uh, we just didn't do a great job, as you just mentioned, for us keeping contain. I think it was uh, Olivier right there. And then also the safety. So we got to do a great job of turning it back inside to pursuit. You really like Josh Allen coming out of the draft. Um, was there an effort on Arizona's <coughs> part to move up? Uh, I've moved on, man. 
that's, that's, that's a blur, you know, so uh, I'm not even thinking about that. Because that was an issue with him coming out of the draft. Is that something you think a quarterback can improve and ha has he? I think he's improved just to, based off the things I've seen off film. You know, um, he's still in his second year. You know, like most of them, they try to sometimes force things in there. But uh, I think for the most part, you can see him, you know, uh, with accuracy, particularly in the red zone. He does some good things down there, which, you know, has been a nemesis for us this year. We've got to do a great job in the red zone. A guy has some ball security issues, like Allen, 10 fumbles this year. Do you tell your guys to approach him any differently if they get a chance at him as a runner? Or, I mean, you just said Greedy tried to strip and then, you know, missed the tackle. So how do you kind of balance that? With <coughs> I think it's different. It's always based off, you know, the second guy in there. Uh, but when you're talking about the interior line, uh, particularly about the defensive guys, uh, we should always be trying to go for the ball. That's a point of emphasis there. And uh, he has had some issues in the past. Uh, that's something that we've been pointing out all week. Uh, I know right now uh, we need to do everything that we can to try to create more takeaways and give the ball back to the offense. So uh, it's definitely a point of emphasis. How much um, emphasis is there on if they get in short yardage, like even against Washington, they get stuffed at the goal line three times, but he just seems like he's automatic on the sneak. How do you prepare for that or combat that? Big physical guy, you know, talk to the coaches about it this week. You know, uh, my time in Carolina, he just reminds you of Cam a little bit with just the physicality uh, and how it's so tough to bring him down. So we just got to find a way to keep him out.